Right, moving on in breaking news coming in, two minor students have been injured in South Kashmir's Shopian district after a school bus they were traveling in came under attack of stone pelters. A Shopian police officials, Shalinder Kumar Mishra, told media that the school bus of Rainbow International School was attacked by miscreants with stones near Zavura village. The two injured students were taken to a nearby hospital. That's the latest news coming in from the northern Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir, where two minor students have been injured in South Kashmir's Shopian district after a school bus they were traveling in came under attack of stone pelters. Right, joining me for more on this story is my colleague Karthike Sharma, live from the Weon newsroom. Good afternoon, Karthike. What more information do we have at this point in time about this attack? on these school students you know it's a very uh, it's a very shocking incident uh, ramesh uh, both chief minister uh, umar uh, mahbub mufti and former chief minister umar abdullah have reacted to it they have criticized it they have said it should not have happened what happened in shopia was that there was a school bus now school bus uh, got attacked by the stone pelters it was an indiscriminate pelting done by them so uh, I, I would say that you know it just goes on to represent that you know sometimes which is being interpreted as uh, some sort of an unrest against the state government also also goes on to show that how unruly uh, and how indiscriminate these stone pelters can be in the name of ideology uh, how indiscriminate they can be in in the name of the high ideals they enshrine for themselves so uh, the, the, these kids were taken to the hospitals. Two of them suffered head injuries. Uh, their photograph is available uh, in social media. The father has already spoken. And 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 most important of all is that you know this is this is what happens when protest becomes un indisciplined. And on top of it, uh, I think the fact that uh, the stone pelters feel emboldened because they feel that you know why will security forces fire them fire at them because they don't have weapons? It will create a bad international press or bad national press. So it's it's a it's such a uh, sorry state of affairs that uh, they did not even uh, they did not even stop their protest when they knew that the school bus was uh, passing through. And please let me tell you, I have seen the visuals myself, uh, Ramesh. The bus clearly indicated that it was a school bus. Mm -hmm. It was in yellow, Ramesh, and right. the school bus was written on it as it is as it is supposed to be. You know the marking, the numbers. But even then, it happened. Indeed. And Karthike, you now this is happening with alarming regularity, the incident of stone building in Jammu and Kashmir. Does it indicate to your mind, uh, in a symptomatic or larger malaise in the valley and outside? Obviously, it's a, it's a larger malaise in the, in, in the valley and outside because stone pelting first received some, I would say, uh, casual or uh, cultivated support uh, from various sections of the society on the ground that it represents an unrest. So there was a, some sort of a philosophical or ideological justification in name of uh, the democratic rights as enshrined in our constitution. And, and, I, and I think that uh, that got misused because stone pelting in itself is uh, violence. Ramesh, you, you have been to uh, West Asia. You would understand that the stone pelting is not a Gandhian protest. Uh, it's, it's not non-violent stone pelting is a violent way of uh, protest but it's a tactic first i would say episode of stone pelting took place as part of the first intifada uh, in palestine and israel and why because they realized that if they would throw stones at the israeli forces then israeli forces will not fire them fire at them with real bullets because then that would be an indisc uh, indiscriminate firing right. unproportional retaliation so they have utilized that tactic and it's not as if the security forces don't uh, get hurt or injured by stone pelting. They do get injured by stone pelting. It's a tactic. It's not a Gandhian way of protest that, you know, students bare hands without anything are protesting. No, it's a violent way of protesting. Right. Karthike, do stay on. We are going to get uh, visuals of uh, the attack and the tweet put out by Chief Minister Mehbub Mufti. She says, and I quote, shocked and angered to hear of the attack on a school bus in Shopian. The perpetrators of this senseless and cowardly act will be brought to justice, unquote. That's the latest tweet coming in from Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti of the northern Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir. Right, just to bring our viewers up to speed with the latest news coming in from Jammu and Kashmir. Two minor students have been injured in South Kashmir's Shopian district after a school bus they were traveling in came under attack of the stone pelters. 
Now, Shopian police official Shalinder Kumar Mishra told media that the school bus of Rainbow International School was attacked by miscreants with stones near Zavura village. The two injured students have since been taken to a nearby hospital. Also coming in, a tweet by former Chief Minister Umar Abdullah. He says, and I quote, How does pelting stones on school children or tourist buses help advance the agenda of these stone pelters? These attacks deserve our unequivocal condemnation, and this tweet is mine, unquote. So that's Omar Abdullah tweeting about the incident. Also, Chief Minister Mehbo Mufti has tweeted about this incident in the last few minutes or so. We'll get you all the latest details from this incident in Jammu and Kashmir. All right, if I can go to my colleague Karthagi one more time. Karthagi, as the tweets mentioned there by Omar Abdullah and Mehbo Mufti, this is getting serious by the day. Absolutely, it's a, it's, it's a very serious issue. Uh, it's serious not only in the sense that the children got hurt, it's serious in the sense it exposes stone pelters. Stone pelters have been exposed. You see, there was a great hue and cry when one of the majors of the Indian Army had tied a person who was stone pelting. And the reason which was given was that it was done so that the stone pelters would not attack and the forces would not have to use indiscriminate um, uh, or, or indulge in indiscriminate firing or use uh, a disproportionate force. What happened, uh, Ramesh? It created a discourse that democratic rights have been violated. Don't these students have democratic right? Aren't they covered under the same human rights, these children? Right. Where, where, where does Stone Pelter's right starts and where does it end? Right. Do they decide it for themselves? Right. Kartagi, do stay on. We are now joined on the phone line from Jammu and Kashmir by the State Director General of Police, Mr. S.P. Weth. Good afternoon to you, Mr. Weth. Uh, tell us more about this incident where two minor school students were attacked by Stone Pelters. This in spite of the school bus saying in so many words that it is a school bus carrying children and that they should not be harmed. That's right. Uh, the children have been shifted, uh, injured have been shifted to the hospital. We have registered an FIR and uh, I have instructed my officers uh, to identify these uh, criminals. They should face the law. And uh, we, we, we assure everyone that action shall be taken against them. And uh, I appeal to the parents and to the civilians of that area. They should assist the police in identifying and taking these people to law. Mr. Vaid, I Thank want to you. understand what was the provocation for this incident? Uh, provocation? Uh, there was no provocation. Uh, uh, Pelting on children, what kind of provocation could it be? I don't think the school children have any, any provocation to this. These people have gone, uh, they have, it's madness at its worst. Right, so as Mr. Vaid says, this is madness at its worst. And very quickly, Mr. Vaid, before we let you go, or when I'm told we've lost that connection with Mr. Wares. As he says, this is madness at its worst. The case of stone pelting injuring two minor school students traveling in a school bus in South Kashmir's Shopian district. Right, I'm told we have uh, the soundbite of the injured uh, student's father. Let's listen in. तो स्कूल बस जा रही थी जोरा के आसपास क्योंकि मैं वहां पे नहीं था खुद मैं हॉस्पिटल बाद में पहुंचा हूं तो वहां क्या कहते हैं कि पथराव हुआ है तो उसी पथराव के जदमी मेरा बच्चा भी आ गया और उसको जो है पत्थर सर में लगा है राइट सो एज जस्ट टू ब्रिंग अ व्यूअर्स अप टू स्पीड विद द लेटेस्ट न्यूज़ कमिंग इन फ्रॉम जॉइन कश्मीर मेबू मुफ्ती द चीफ मिनिस्टर हैज ट्वीटेड हर इंडिग्नेशन ऑफ एट द इंसिडेंट शी सेज एंड आई कोट Shocked and angered to hear of the attack on a school bus in Shopian, the perpetrators of this senseless and cowardly act will be brought to justice, unquote. Also tweeting was Omar Abdullah, a former chief minister of the state. He says, and I quote again, How does pelting stones on school children or tourist buses help advance the agenda of these stone pelters? These attacks deserve our unequivocal condemnation and this tweet is mine, unquote. Right, so just to stay on these visuals for the moment, that's the story we're tracking here on Beyond This Moment of the senseless attack on school students. And these are the latest visuals coming to you of those very students who were attacked by stone pelters in South Kashmir's Shopian district earlier today. 
That's the school bus which was damaged in the stone pelting and images of the students lying on hospital beds injured in the nearby hospital. Two minor school children have been injured in the attack and they have since been removed to a nearby hospital. But the school bus also has been damaged by the stone pelters. And just to bring our viewers up to speed with the latest news coming in from Jammu and Kashmir, as the Director General of Police, Mr. S.P. Wath, told Vion just moments ago, this is a mad case, a maddening case uh, at its worst, of stone pelters attacking school children traveling in a bus in Shopian district of South Kashmir. This is a madness at its worst, says DGP Mr. S.P. Wath. Right, we'll stay on this story for the moment and joining me again will be my colleague Karthike Sharma and we'll get you all the latest details from Srinagar and elsewhere in the state about this unfortunate attack in which two minor school children were attacked by stone pelters in South Kashmir's Shopian district. All right, coming to you, uh, Karthage, one more time. As uh, Mr. S.P. Ware, the state police chief said, told Vion just moments ago, this is madness at its worst. Absolutely. The point, uh, Ramesh, I was making before, uh, you, you, you had a word with the Director General of Police of uh, Jammu and Kashmir. It's, not, it's, it's part and parcel of uh, Pakistan to use students as fronts to attack Indian security forces, please and understand, and you would have seen the difference that though attacks have been taking place uh, at our military installations, but those are uh, those are fidaeen attacks, those are suicide attacks at high-value targets. For example, Pathan Court attack took place, then one attack took place in Uri sector. But most of the most of the other low-intensity attacks within the valley are taking place on people associated with the government for example what it is what they have tried to do is they are trying to paralyze this civilian uh, infrastructure of the governance so what you do you involve college students you involve school students the money is paid across the border the, you know the funding comes from there and what what all you need to do you need to have stones in your hand and then, if there is disproportionate force, then you can always go to Amnesty International. You can always say that the human rights have been violated. So there are two things here. And people forget, and people forget that w the way our security forces have handled uh, insurgency in JNK is not the way Sri Lankan handled LTTE. It is not, it's not the same way Myanmar's armies have dealt with the rebels uh, in, in its uh, eastern sector. It is not the way that our, our police in 1980s dealt with the Khalistani terrorists. Our, our, our dealing with Kashmir's insurgency has been very, very different. It's not even Mizoram where, where ISOL was bombed. You know, so you know there are various examples. With or it's not even it's not even uh, Dantewada or Naxalites, where where we have actually gone after uh, Naxalites and killed 13, 40 people at a go. In a recent shootout, there were 40, 40 or 45 uh, Naxalites who were killed, and the body the bodies were found floating in the Netravati River there. So I would say that in Kashmir, the use of force has not been disproportionate but this new tactic on part of pakistan needs to be exposed because in the name of young children using their face they are hurting the indian security forces indeed karthike what this incident speaks to is that no one and i repeat no one is immune from these stone pelters not even children in this case school children traveling in a school bus Absolutely. And there is a second thing, it has happened in Shopia. A lot of people would say that the Shopia is, you know, one of the most radicalized areas in Kashmir. It's like hotbed of militancy. And uh, also because of the fact that, you know, it's, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, orchards there. It becomes very easy for the militants to move from one orchard to another. But that's another story. Issue here is that stone pelting has become a new tactic on part of terrorists to use young people to divert attention from their, from their own movement. Generally, their movement used to be, if you remember five or six years back, terrorists were spotted when they moved from spot A to spot B. Right now, the spotting is not happening because stone pelting hides that movement away. Secondly, stone pelting has also created a fear. 
after the stone pelting phenomena how come people associated with police army kashmiris are being killed by terrorists because they are trying to attack this civilian infrastructure of governance because in 1980s and 90s whatever happened there was some sort of a civilian normalcy despite exodus of pandits but what has happened right now is it is it is impossible for people within kashmir to move from one city to another so military operation or the issues of military and those faced by the civil society have become one so i would say that this terrorism has moved into a different phase altogether ramesh it's a different dynamic some tactics are borrowed from palestine some tactics are borrowed from some other country but it has become increasingly very very dangerous and it has multiplied and it has it is being sustained over social media right. which cannot be controlled but kartike do stay on i'm now joined on the phone line by mr sushil pandit who watches kashmir affairs very closely mr pandit thank you for joining me on this bulletin on vion now we've heard this unfortunate news coming in from shopian of a stone pelting incident on a school bus in which two minor students have been injured what does it speak to you about the state of affairs in the valley today mr pandit i'm not surprised this incident was very this monster has been pushed over a pit all and be in the valley especially those who claim to represent the valley in mainstream politics they have been advocating their cause they have been them and today they have shot quality through tweets things have come to roots just felt the army is in an encounter against militants they don't just pelt stones on tourists who are considered outsiders and un they are warring them a state a system that cannot take responsibility of their young and defenseless going to school right someone must resign someone must take responsibility and one start thing kashmir is headed for the all the fall mr pandit we'll try to fix that audio line with you in a bit but uh, mr pandit saying and taking a strong position that someone heads must roll and that someone somewhere needs to resign if i can come to you one more time mr pandit and i hopefully this time the audio line will be better now you said that this is uh, this is unpardonable but this is not the first time stone pelting incidents have taken place and reported from from the kashmir valley do you see a larger design in all of this a pattern to these incidents of stone pelting in the valley yes ramesh i do this is the locust swarm it is nothing as an exception it has been built in built up and nourished over a period of time today it has gone out of control yesterday operated for specific targets today they are uncontrolled mob it has become a riot that can happen anywhere anytime because pelting stones has been sanctified it has been legitimized and over a period of time all targets are are kosher are legitimate and even <laughs> cook senseless and that means that we have gone right right uh, mr pandit do stay on we'll try to fix that audio line with you in a bit and also i'll ask my colleague kartikey to stay on in the meantime i'm now joined by kar jilani as journalist from kashmir good afternoon to you and what's the latest you're hearing on this unfortunate case of stone pelting which has injured two minor school students in shopian uh well uh, this is indeed uh, an act of madness uh, <coughs> which uh, you know anyone found involved in this should be dealt with uh, accordingly but you know uh, the students have been targeted uh, by the state as well as the non state actors during the last two years if you see how uh, the police and crpf have dealt with students you know got an inside the campuses universities and colleges and fired their gas shells and pellets at students so the student community has been brutalized for the last 2 years and it's indeed very sad that even now stone throwing youth have targeted these minor students 
but I think there's a larger problem at hand. Gohar, I want to understand from you the, the, the mentality, the mindset of what motivates or provokes these stone pelters, these young boys into the violent acts of violence. Explain to the viewer what might be the motivation or the provocation in this particular case of, of deliberately targeting a school bus and attacking two minor school students. Uh, I think it will be very uh, premature to say what, what uh, the immediate motivation is because uh, now details are sketchy and they are emerging right now. Uh, SP uh, Wade, who is uh, the DGP of police, he has sent out a couple of tweets about this incident and even Chief Minister Mehbam Mufti has tweeted. So, you know, uh, we are also confirming from our sources in South Kashmir uh, the immediate provocation is not uh, known, but because this is very, it, this has not happened before, and it's, uh, uh, I believe, the first of its kind, where uh, through stone throwing youth have targeted uh, a school carrying bus, uh, bus uh, carrying school children. But uh, as I said earlier, that students have been at the receiving end from the state, uh, you know, police and paramilitary and army from the last two years, where even campuses have to be shut because of the violence perpetrated against them by the state police. But Gohar attacking school <coughs> children, minor children at that, isn't it unprecedented and somewhat unwarranted? It is. I, as I said in the beginning, that it's an act of madness and uh, those involved should be dealt with accordingly. Right. On that note, Gohar Jilani, thank you for so much for sharing more information on that unfortunate case coming in from Shopian district in South Kashmir. And these are the latest visuals coming to you from Shopian of that school bus which was attacked in Shopian earlier today, in which two minor school children also suffered injuries and they've been shifted to a nearby hospital where they are recovering as we speak. These are the visuals coming to you off that school bus, which was attacked in Shopian. And two minor school children, which you're seeing on your screens right now, have been shifted to a nearby hospital where they are recovering. Right. Staying with me is my colleague Karthike Sharma. Karthike, have you heard a, a number of voices from the valley, including the DGP, Mr. Wave, and Gohar Jilani, a journalist, and also Sushil, Sushil Pandit, who keenly watches the Kashmir affairs. All of them unequivocally condemning this incident. But what do you, where do you think, see things going from here, especially given the provocation of the stone pelters to attack or not spare even minor school children? It's not defensible. Uh, and for this reason, uh, you find... Uh you know, uh, sentiments being aired against the stone pelters. But the issue is that stone pelting cannot be accommodated in a political discourse as a legal, justified, uh, and an honored way of protesting your grievances. We have to understand that what happened earlier, there was some sort of a romanticization uh, by one section of our civil society and our, our politician uh, that, you know, the stone pelting goes on to show the desperation in Kashmir. So the whole issue got politicized and people at that point in time failed to understand that the stone pelting is a tactic. It's not a technique. It's not manifestation of your ideology. It was a tactic to bully down the security forces. So uh, I think this will uh, at least uh, uh, put this uh, debate to rest that there is nothing romantic about stone pelters. Uh, it is, it's, not, uh, it's not about youth getting angry. Stone pelting is an organized activity. Stone felting is a funded activity by Huriyat and other uh, players in Kashmir. And stone pelters are given money. No one goes out to pelt stone like that, pelt stone like th in the way it has happened. And secondly, when people say that it's stone pelt, the beauty, you know, the whole aspect of stone pelting is mysterious because it's, it's not organized. You don't have a leader. So when you don't have a leader, it becomes like a mass unrest. And mass unrest in political discourse has the legitimacy. It's like Tehri Square. It's like protests taking place in Tunisia. Uh, it is like protests take, which are taking place in Armenia today. But there is no legitimacy of such protests here because these are organized. It's just that the organizers don't show their face. It's not Tahrir Square. There is no Tahrir Square happening there. It is organized when they know that there is an ambush against terrorists, stone pelters come. When you know that there is a road cleaning operation, stone pelters come. So where do they come from? Where do they go back? And secondly, terrorists need to hide in forests. It's a great strategy. You come out of your drawing room, you take 500 rupees, you pelt stones, you know, take off your scarf and go back home and have warm food. So this message has to go that there's nothing romantic about being stone pelters. This is the true face of stone pelters of Kashmir.
Indeed, Karthik do stay on. I want to bring our viewers up to speed with all the news coming in from Shopian in Jammu and Kashmir. Two minor students have been injured in South Kashmir's Shopian district after a school bus they were traveling in came under the attack from stone pelters. Shopian police official Shalender Kumar Mishra told media that the school bus of Rainbow International School was attacked by miscreants with stones near Zavura village. The two injured students have since been shifted to a nearby hospital. Right, joining me on the phone line is Mr. Kuldeep Khoda, a former a retired police official. Mr. Khoda, thank you for speaking to Beyond. What do you make of this unfortunate case of minor school children being attacked by stone pelters in what is completely unprovoked and madness at its worst? This obviously reflects on the mentality of the people who are keeping the situation in Valley disturbed. It is a very well-known fact that they are being paid from across by the park establishment through Hawala and other routes. And it is also a well-known fact that in the past, whenever these uh, channels were unearthed, it was established that stone pelters are being regularly paid. Now, for getting this payment from Pakistan, they are not sparing even small children from their nefarious activities. It only shows the depth the, uh, to which these uh, perpetrators of uh, keeping the situation disturbed can go and uh, injure the children who are going to the school. So in any conflict zone also, the children are at least spared by the, by the people who are at war or at, uh, uh, who, are, who, are, who are resorting to law and order problems. So obviously in this case, the law should take stone calls and the perpetrators have to be identified and have to be uh, put in behind the bars. There is no other way to deal with it. The law and order has to be dealt with firmly. And uh, the police, which, which has been doing a wonderful job, otherwise also on the anti-terrorism front, they need to be allowed to work in a manner so that the peace and uh, normalcy is allowed to uh, prevail in the valley. It's a purely professional job, and only professionals should deal with it. Right, Mr. Kora, as you correctly mentioned there, that there is a larger design to all of this. This is not an isolated case. There is clearly a pattern to this incident stone pelting and how they receive funds and sustenance from across the border and the line of control. But coming to the challenges before the security forces, Mr. Koda, how do you think they should uh, overcome this challenge, especially given the fact that this is asymmetric warfare, there's a state forces and then there are these stone pelters and the state has to, in all these cases, bear responsibility for not using disproportionate force. So how do you handle this situation of crisis? Well, uh, disproportionate force has not to be used, but at the same time, the situation has to be dealt with and uh, dealt with firmly, and the situation has to be controlled in the larger interest of maintenance of peace, which every citizen of Kashmir deserves. Right. And obviously, in this case, uh, there have been uh, instances where the stone pelters are sometimes hooked, sometimes released, and uh, it is it should be basically the responsibility of the police to see who all are to be booked and who are to be released right. and at what type of time and the courts are there overall to see the, the working of the police. If, if they, you know, there's a general principle that authority and responsibility should be with the same agency. The responsibility is obviously of the police, but to take final call on who should be detained and who should be released, that should also be the police. Right. Only then you can have a semblance of normalcy and the peace can be restored. Right, fair enough. Uh, your point is well taken, Mr. Khoda. Thank you for joining me on this bulletin. That was Mr. Kuldeep Khoda, former retired police official, joining us on the phone line. Also joining me now is another retired police official, Mr. Vikram Singh. Good afternoon, Mr. Singh. Thank you for joining us on We On. What do you make of this latest provocation coming in from Shopian district of Jammu and Kashmir, where not even minor school children have been spared by stone pelters? Uh, good afternoon. The worst form of cowardice that I've ever encountered. Now that your importance vis-a-vis -vis paramilitary forces, the police forces and the armed forces is clear, you choose to target innocent and defenseless school children. I would rather, as Kuldeep Khoda has said, intelligence-based proactive action by the local police to identify and round up the stone pelters. <laughs> 
तब यहाँ कुछ स्टोन पेल्टर्स कुछ मिसक्रियंट्स उन्होंने इसको घेरा है और इस पर स्टोन पेल्टिंग की है इसके जो शीशे थे वो बच्चों ने खोल रखे थे सारे स्टोन अंदर गए बच्चे बड़े मुश्किल से बचे हैं जिसमें एक बच्चे को ज़्यादा ग्रीवियस इंजरी हो गई है उसको हेड इंजरी हुई है तो प्रिलिमिनरी इलाज के बाद श्रीनगर के जो सौरा इंस्टीट्यूट है वहाँ उसको ले जाया गया उसका सीटी स्कैन अभी चल रहा है इमीडिएटली हमने कॉग्निजेंस लिया जैसे आपने देखा है बस हमने यहाँ बुला ली है और बच्चे को इवैक्यूएट कर दिया गया है एरिया को सैनिटाइज करके स्टोन पल्टर्स के पीछे टीम्स लगा दी गई हैं बहुत जल्द उनकी गिरफ्तारी बामल लाई जाएगी और इस केस में जो एफ बनती है उसको पूरा प्रोसीजर के हिसाब से Right, Mr Singh heard, uh, the police official briefing the media about the unfortunate incident that happened in Shopian now you were you were speaking about intelligence based operation to combat such incidents now in your opinion uh, as far as the state is concerned the state cannot use disproportionate force against such uh, perpetrators in your estimation how does the state impose costs on the on the on on such stone pelters i would never recommend disproportionate Use of force because it is counterproductive. But I would certainly say proportionate and appropriate use of force. And as in the police lingo, they say munasib. Munasib is appropriate. Right. And when it is intelligence based, you pick on the ring leaders. When you get the ring leaders, they will disclose the funding. Once the funding is there, you go to the cohorts, and those are the who are the puppeteers. Then the whole episode is there. Mere registration of the case does not infuse much confidence and does not build much confidence. Area domination, confidence-building measures, having SPOs, and then intelligence-based operations, and there should be. I would rather recommend that once a person is behind bars, no clemency for such elements at all. Clemency right. to them is absolutely uncalled for. You have to be cruel to be kind. Right, Mrs. Singh. Also, we've uh, we've heard about uh, the reports coming in from Shopian, and as you mentioned. there is clearly a larger design to all of this a clear pattern emerging from all these various incidents of stone pelting in the kashmir valley what do you make of the the motivation the provocation of what keeps these stone pelters going in spite of these uh, you know crackdowns on them from various uh, you know time to time we would be living in an illusion if we were to presume that all these stone pelters are active merely because of some kind of motivation no there is a larger design and a larger canvas from across the border the isi is monitoring funding motivating and through whatsapp and through other channels they are motivating our youngsters we need to deradicalize them we need to induct them and some kind of a reorientation needs to be required but yes the ring leaders the cohorts the main people who are the fundamental in their past orchestra the master conductors of this orchestra need to be accounted for and they need to be put behind bars the state will have to have a no nonsense approach to them no question of because it is misplaced compassion when we are liberal towards stone pelters and their cohorts i would rather that once they are in jail their trials and their punishment should be some some place in gwalior or phind uh, or morena where they have no access to the uh, the facilities that they are accustomed to this has happened in the past and we need to do it now right so as mr vikram singh is uh, saying uh, says there the state should adopt a no nonsense approach and bring the master conductors of the orchestra to justice that's what is being said by mr vikram singh a former retired police official who has headed the organization for a long time thank you mr singh for joining us on we on appreciate it right joining me now is on the phone line is a senior journalist who has been watching the kashmir affairs for a very long time mr rahul jalali mr jalali thank you so much for joining us on we on First of all, what do you make of this unfortunate case where stone pelters targeted did not even spare minor school children in Shopian? Well, obviously it's a barbaric act. But that apart, you've got to look at it that there has been a change in strategy uh, in the levels of barbarism which Pakistan will promote through terrorism in Kashmir. You look at what happened yesterday. where three innocent young men were shot down who were sitting on a shop front in baramulla uh, and killed today they were attacked a uh, bus carrying school children in shopian so you look that the level of barbarism has been notched up a bit not a bit quite a bit where they're targeting innocence in kashmir well this is the first this is the first time ever that a school children bus has been attacked by stone pelters again three people killed yesterday who were 
totally not committed to anyone, unrelated to any incident, innocent people sitting on a shop front. So look, the idea now is to terrorize the ordinary citizens of Kashmir. This is a new level of terrorism which is being promoted in Kashmir now by Pakistan. Also, Mr. Jalali, how does it reflect on the administration of Chief Minister Mehboob Mufti in the state? Well, I think the administration and even Delhi toyed with the idea of release of stone pelters. Uh, but before that, if you recall, the state administration, including Jammu Kashmir police, had made a list of 80 handlers of these stone pelters, and they had promised that they would be counseling these handlers. I think it's time that all those promises are put into action. They have identified the handlers of the stone pelters through WhatsApp groups, and I think it's time that they apprehend them. You can't allow this kind of stone pelting to go on. It's no longer a question of uh, attacking the security forces by stone pelters, it's attacking children. So how can you allow that? And, uh, and the second point which I want to make here is uh, this is also a time when we've got to ask questions of the separatists, the Uriyas. Why are they silent as yet on this incident of stone pelting? Isn't it a violation of human rights? They remained silent yesterday when these three young men were killed. They're silent yet again. So uh, if they claim to be somewhat concerned about Kashmiris and Kashmir, then speak up. Why are you quiet? Why is this selective... Uh, you know, condemnation of human rights alone. Time, they condemn it if they, if they really mean what they say. Indeed, as Mr. Jalali says, uh, why is the Hurriyat Conference silent on this issue? Why is the APHC not speaking up against the stone pelters who did not even spare minor school children traveling in a school bus in Shopian earlier today? On that note, Mr. Jalali, thank you so much for speaking to Beyond. Appreciate it. Right, so just to bring our viewers up to speed with all the news coming in from the northern Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir. Two minor students have been injured in South Kashmir's Shopian district after a school bus they were traveling in came under attack from stone pelters. The Shopian police official Sharender Kumar Mishra told media that the school bus of Rainbow International School was attacked by miscreants with stones near Zavura village. The two injured school students were since been removed to a nearby hospital. Let's listen in to reactions coming in from parents of the injured students. We have taken our children to school for 8 hours. The bus was going to go to the Zohra. I was not there yet. I have reached the hospital later. तो वहाँ क्या कहते हैं कि पत्थराव हुआ है तो उसी पत्थराव के जद में मेरा बच्चा भी आ गया और उसको जो है पत्थर सर में लगा है